The second segment is performing routine maintenance. Uh, this is after it's been in service and uh, you need to periodically check things. You know, mechanical driven equipment you know, uses oil, gets wear and tear. So you want to make sure you do certain checks. Uh, uh, as previously shown in previous class uh, about the packet replacement. Uh, it all applies where it's a vertical turbine pump or where it's a centrifugal pump. Uh, this particular one has a mechanical seal, so there's really not too much adjustment on the mechanical seal once you get everything else adjusted for the setting. But, but uh, you know, like I just showed previously, this particular pump <coughs> has a open type impeller, but there's no shroud on it, no wear ring, and you've got different kinds of centrifugals that has different kinds of adjustment. Uh, this particular one has lockdown bolts and jacking screws on the bearing housing. will let you, which enables you to move it in and out to close up the clearance from the impeller to the inside of the blue casing. As previously said, uh, you know, this, this particular pump has a mechanical seal. Uh, you want to check to make sure it's got the proper adjustment. There usually is instructions with each each seal. Uh, if you have to actually install it or do adjustment on it, it tells you how to get the setting once you have done your other adjustments. Uh, Inspect that, make sure that's correct. Uh, some pumps are shipped with a spacer or a uh, shipping fork, and those have to be removed and maybe final lockdown after everything's in place. But as previous before, uh, you documented when you did the initial installation, check the amperages, the voltage, the pressure output, uh, and the flow, and see if you've got everything you need as compared or trending how it compared to what it was when you first installed it. You care to talk about this drone and yeah. lubrication and so forth? Uh, on lubricating your bearings, you got oil or you got grease. Uh, one thing is you don't want to mix the oils, or mix the grease, make sure you're using the same type. Uh, as far as greasing a bearing, uh, it's based on the hours that you run it and the operating condition and the speed of it. So you need to go back to owner's manual and always refer to it uh, for, for your specific needs on it. Um, you always want to look at, every time you inspect it, it's a you know, yearly inspection or whatever, make sure you don't see any de deterioration on the base that's going to cause uh, any issues or a lot of rust build up on it. Uh, if it is, you need, to, you need to treat that because uh, if you don't deal with it, it will just get worse and cause, cause problems. Um, you know, make sure before you take the guard off or do any mechanical stuff, it's locked out, tagged out. Once you've done that, you know, we want to pull the guard off of it. We can check for alignment and everything to see if we're still lined up. Uh, we can make sure nothing's come loose. Uh, bolts, screws, nuts, they all can work themselves loose. Uh, so we want to check all that stuff, make sure everything here is, uh, is tight and everything's working the way it's supposed to. Uh, put our guard back on and bolt it down. After we got everything hooked up, you got our water valve, our valves turned back on, our water's on. We we'll have a qualified electrician uh, energize it and, and run it. Uh, if we haven't unhooked anything other than locking it out, our rotation should still be the same. Uh, when we start up, we want to again check the amps, the bolts, uh, pressure on the gauge. If you've got a gauge, if you've got a flow meter, do it, record every bit of it, and take it back compared to your initial startup. Then you can see if you're losing any performance, and if you are, you might need to go back up here and readjust the pump uh, on an open impeller. If it's a closed impeller, you might have to uh, pull it and actually get it, get it sent off to the repair shop to get it rebuilt. Uh, we'll step over here. We've got a couple more examples I want to show you about uh, different pile, styles of impellers and adjustments. Uh, like I said before, we've got uh, uh, different types of impellers. You'll see different impellers on this whatever the application may be. Uh, this particular one is a trash pump. It's an open-veined uh, trash pump. 
that uses a wear plate on the front. And uh, this particular one is a self primer. That, from the looks of it, it's got a check valve on the suction side that helps keep uh, a cavity full of water when you're first initially priming it. And it has, looks like a cut water area where the pellet comes in close to it to help evacuate the air out of the system. A particular adjustment on this one, uh, there's a wear plate here that can be shimmed and then locked down in place. Uh, some of these, they may have shims in behind the impeller because over time, this front area will wear on this wear plate. Uh, you want to close that gap back up. Uh, this particular unit looks like it's uh, an oil field unit, uh, which, on the, like with the other pump, you, it's best to have a sight level or that way you can actually visually see it. Breather up here to, for expansion of heat. Uh, we'll step over and see this other one here. See the third, third, third example. So. This is another example uh, style of pump. This is a closed, enclosed impeller trash type pump. Uh, it may only go up to maybe like one inch solids at the most. Uh, so it can hit a lot of different areas of, of the application that you may be using. This particular one has no adjustment on the bearing frame or impeller. What determines the clearance is the wear rings of the impeller to the ID of the wear ring side of the pump casing. Uh, rough rule of thumb, it's going to be somewhere around 15 thousandths, uh, plus or minus, depending on what's, what size it is, what application it is, and what temperature the water is. Uh, if you've never if you take one off, take the blue housing off, there's these are balancing where they've actually had to balance the impeller. So it's not wear spots, it's where they take weight off of it when they dynamically balance the impeller uh, to get everything running smoothly. Um, this particular pump, the lubrication is grease uh, lubrication on the front bearing and the back bearing. There's these Zerk fittings that have these little plastic protective caps usually, but it's a grease fitting that you uh, can apply grease uh, by the recommended uh, lubrication specs in the IOM manual. Uh, you gotta make sure you got uh, compatible grease and use it. You, know, you don't wanna use different base grease uh, that's not cat compatible with each other. Uh, but there's one on the front, one on the back, and uh, you've got to not over grease the bearings because it will cause premature failure. They have to have room to breathe. The rule of, the rule of thumb is no more than two thirds capacity of bearing of grease. But uh, this, you definitely don't want to fill this whole cavity up. That would be a, a detrimental pump failure real quick. That's within a motor. You never want to over grease them. So too much grease can be worse than not enough.